Hello everybody and welcome to the Brog. You've made it to episode 72. I'm your host. <clears throat> and today I wanted to talk a little bit about the religion of solitude. And I haven't um, written anything down, but from the website adamjosh.com I'll find some links and some other stories that I've done about life on other planets and my continuing investigative research into extraterrestrial life and life on other planets. Uh, you know, we know that the government lies to us. I think that's sort of axiomatic, self-evident. Um, but we don't apply that knowledge to other things that the government has or hasn't told us. And we can see a pretty clear pattern of ridicule for the longest time for people who have believed in uh, life on other planets or whatever. But <clears throat> Today I wanted to talk about the religion of solitude, the religion of aloneness, the religion of we are alone, humanity is all that there is, and the implications of that religion. I have about an hour or two in between things that I'm doing, so I can get this video recorded, hopefully, and upload it to the website, get some links on it, and then uh, get back to work. I got some mango juice here. <clears throat> I have some yogurt, and I mixed in blueberries and uh, raisins, and I have some mango slices here, and I might just eat that while I'm talking to you. So. I watched this video yesterday, which I'll, I'll link to in, um, on the website. If you're watching this on YouTube right now, I would highly suggest, by the way, to go to the link that's below. I'll, I'll write something like, check this video on the website, because I'll put all the references and other things to other blogs and references that I've done there. <clears throat> but. I'm sort of like a amateur researcher and because I've had like a public website uh, or like a website that uh, I'm a, more like a semi-public figure who had, who's had a website. I wouldn't consider myself a public figure but I've lived my life like an open book for as long as I've been alive pretty much so because of that people send me emails and information so I'm like a a researcher, an amateur researcher in that sense, and doing ongoing investigative research and investigative journalism into the things that I find interesting. So like, take the, take the topic of life on other planets, right? So we're told that, you know, there's no life on the moon, there's no life anywhere else, uh, Mars is an uninhabitable wasteland, Pluto is ice cold, you know all the drill. All the things that you're told in high school and growing up. That Now, we're told that by our so-called scientists, by our so-called uh, higher-ups, you know, and we're told that uh, on a repeater-type basis. Like, they tell us, and then we're supposed to believe it. Four plus four equals nine, and that's just how it is. Don't question it. You know? Your government loves you. Don't question your government. We love you, and if you disobey us, we're going to pepper spray you. If you try to occupy anything or protest, we're going to pepper spray you because we own you, but we love you. We spike your water with fluoride, with chlorine. We don't release cures for diseases that we've had cures for forever, but we love you. We set up cities as tax farms to solely profit off your existence like you're a battery. But, we love you. Don't question the government. Or we have pepper spray for that. 
Land of the Free, Home of the Brave. Send me all your poor and your weak and so we can give them free pepper spray! <clears throat> I haven't brogged for a while or done a video blog because I've been really irritated about the whole pepper spraying issue. Um, totally off topic, but it's been really irritating me. I've been dreaming about it too. I had a dream that I got pepper sprayed, and I love hot sauce, as many of you may know, and spicy food, which is sort of my Achilles heel. And uh, in the dream, the pepper spray didn't bother me. So today, the yogurt is my hummus, and this is my pita, the mango. It's actually really tasty. So, <clears throat> we're fed all this information growing up that that people don't really analyze that much. Like, it's sort of safe to say if the government or spokesmen, spokespeople for the government are ridiculing something and there's usually truth to it or something else behind it or <clears throat> I've said before it's safe to say the opposite of whatever the government says is true is usually true to not have sexual relations with that woman <clears throat> there are weapons of mass destruction in Iraq I'm sure you can think of your own examples. So, we don't take that knowledge and apply it to some of the most important things that we can. Like life on other planets. Are we alone? Why are we here? What happens when we die? What does the government know that they're hiding? So, I've taken, <coughs> or attempted to take, a radical 180 in my thinking and it's hard because it it takes active it's an active thought that doesn't for me at least there's no life on other planets right flip that around exactly on its head assume that the government's lying about this like they're lying about pretty much everything else and flip it so now in my mind the moon is habited habit <laughs> habited there's a population, I've, I've set the figure at 600 million on Mars, and you know, they say that there's only, what, seven or nine, I'm so out, to date, out, out of date on that, but they say there's a certain amount of planets in our solar system, and I'm sorry that I, off the top of my head, is it seven or nine or ten or eleven, I don't know, but that's probably a lie, is my point, is, and uh, let's just say there's like 40, right, I've heard that there's 40 from John Lear, but I'm not, you know. I've heard him say that, but I don't, you know, how am I supposed to know that? So, let's flip it on its head and say, from now on, I decide there's life on other planets. Instead of thinking, and buying into this religion of solitude and this religion of loneliness, this religion of we're out here in the middle of the universe by ourselves all alone, which is so unbelievable that it takes great faith to believe it, which is why I'm calling it a religion of solitude, a religion of isolation in the universe. I mean, we know that life is everywhere. We know that there's life in that sense, like air, oxygen, and all that on other planets. So technically, even on microbial levels, if you want to get that detailed, there's life on other planets. <clears throat> so all I'm saying is switch your thinking around and stop buying into the religion of solitude. Start with thinking, all right, maybe, maybe this, 
universe is full of life and teeming with life as we know it is. I mean, energy is life, right? So the universe is made of energy, so that's life. Um, we are the universe, which is a mistake that people make. When you define the universe, you think of it as something out there. The universe is far out there. But, in a proper definition of the universe, you would have to include yourself. I am the universe. The universe is in me. I'm part of the universe. Another thing, we think aliens come from out there. And that's what we're told to believe, right? Aliens are out there. Aliens. Little green men. Aliens. The greys. The reptilians. Zeta Reticuli. You know, the Palladians. I watched this video where the, the guy says that Palladians had sex with him. He's got DNA evidence, and I'll link to the video down there. It's pretty interesting. Took a polygraph. Excuse me. The aliens are out there. Right? Let's flip that around on its head. We are the aliens. We are aliens. If we say, like, any Apollo space program or any, any program, shuttle program or mission where we go to another planet. We are the aliens. We are the aliens. <laughs> I know it sounds weird, but uh, Dwayne Johnson is making a cartoon movie. Uh, I forgot what it's called. Planet 51 or something like that where they... He, his character goes to another move, uh, another planet, and uh, they treat him as an alien. You know, take imagine, take me to your leader. You know, or they're like, oh, little green man, and they're hostile to us, and they treat us like aliens. Well, we've been so conditioned by the movies to be like aliens are out there, but if we go to another planet and there's life there, which there are, we know there is. These are all metaphorical word jargons that we're saying. Life on other planets. Well, obviously there's life on other planets. Planets are alive. Planets are life. They're made of energy. There's life everywhere. The universe is teeming with life. And I'm not, I mean, you can, you can look up, type in on Google, the universe is teeming with life. People of all walks of life and various alphabet uh, soups beside their name have said that. Not just me. You're a part of the universe. Are you alive? Yes, the universe is alive. Do you have emotions? Yes, then the universe has emotions. Can you see? Yes, most people, <laughs> then the universe can see. You don't think the universe can see the eyes that it creates? You don't think that the universe can feel? Like this incredible galactic intelligence orchestrates through whatever means possible, whatever means, whatever, whatever you decide to believe, but whatever the universe is, has created through whatever means, eyeballs. And here we are thinking that we're smarter than the universe. Oh, the universe can't see. The universe is this dead thing. The universe created eyeballs. The universe can see you. The universe can feel you. We are the aliens. And this religion of solitude takes more faith than all of our world religions combined. <clears throat> let's, let's have some object lessons here. I've told you this before, but I've, I've read the Quran three times through, more than some Muslims. I've read the, what they call the Bible, I think, 13 times now. I'm, I'm in uh, Jeremiah right now. I just finished Isaiah. So I just read through it sort of consistently at night. Pick any passage in the Quran. Let's go. And we'll talk about this religion of solitude takes more faith. Here we go. Surah 57. In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. Everything in the heavens and earth glorifies God. He is, he is the mighty wise one. He has sovereign control over the heavens and earth. He gives life and brings death. He has power over all things. He is the first and the last. The outward and the inward. He has knowledge of all things. It was he who created the heavens and earth in <coughs> six, <coughs> six days and then ascended to the throne. What are they talking about here? Are they talking about this like ethereal out there somewhere that nobody can describe spiritual thing 
they're talking about the Quran is talking about the universe this creation this this we are not alone there's something else God Allah could be an alien in this context it's something other than humanity and the Quran is saying this formed all the world it formed us and created us and the universe is wise and the Quran is calling this intelligent galactic force that we are all a part of Allah and entities from other planets if you were assuming that uh, all planets there's habited planets all throughout the universe entities may have come here and visited and that would explain our ancient astronauts cave depictions it could explain uh, alien visitations, UFO abductions, all throughout history could explain a lot of our megalithic structures and uh, pyramids, the crazy pyramid technology and advanced technology and the Roswell crash. A lot of things could be explained by this archetype that I'm talking about here to flip your thinking around and repent from your religion of solitude all you high and mighty Nazi humanists out there who you know opine day in and day out and think that you're the center of the universe you know that takes more faith than what I'm talking about because what I'm talking about actually makes sense and has real concrete backing to it in the sense that I'm saying there's life on other planets and that other planets have life which is sort of axiomatic when you consider that energy is alive um, atomic the atomic structures of things are energy and are alive I got a atom tattooed on my <laughs> leg to remind myself I thought it was funny because my name is Adam, but uh, but Adam to remind myself that we are created of atoms. That these atoms full of energy swirling around are a microcosm, a micro, a micro example, microscopic example of a larger picture. universe is alive. There's life on other planets. The Quran agrees with me. The Bible agrees with me. The Torah agrees with me. The Vedas agree with me. We are the aliens. We've called God aliens. We've called people from other planets aliens we've called we've probably called this is another thing I wanted to talk about real quick was that <clears throat> it's not beyond the realm of possibility that entities have posed as our gods to draw attention to themselves to lead people away from truth and to secure control over entire people groups or religions or places I mean so everybody has this understanding that okay um, Allah is the creator or Yahuwah Yahweh is the creator and then along comes a being from another planet or a being from another dimension or wherever these things that we don't understand imposes as that entity I am Allah, I am Yahweh. Do what I say. And, uh, you know, do this, do that, don't do this. And then we get so far away from where it started. And we need to be aware of that, of the deception, I think. The deception in religion is sort of blatantly obvious when it comes to Catholicism and Christianity. There's lots of deception, and things start out as something, and then they end up at completely something different, something totally different. 
You know, you have this murderous, rampaging god uh, conquesting land after land and murdering and saying, kill entire civilizations in the Torah. And then, one, two, skip a few, 99, you have this Messiah character saying, love your enemies, which is, he's preaching from the Torah, but it's not, it's so far away from what they had come to, what they had, where they had come from. Bless those who curse you. Getting crucified, saying, "Forgive them; they don't know what they they know not what they do." That's so diametrically opposed to where what you read in the Torah about the conquests and uh, King David slaying however many thousands as the uh, adage went. And we don't need to talk about the conquests of. Uh, Islam or Catholicism. I mean, the history of Earth is the history of war, which is why I agree with a lot of people when they say that this is a prison planet, this is a war-based planet. Uh, there's always going to be and always has been some sort of conflict here, and it makes some sort of sense when you take into the broader context that there are various human-looking extraterrestrials or various family of the humanity coming from all over and fighting over control over Earth. The people in the highest levels of government uh, are usually pretty spiritual people or they believe in, you know, was it uh, the Chinese government traces or the Chinese dynasty traces its uh, lineage back to uh, extraterrestrials and uh, the monarchy in Britain claims its right to rule because it's descended from the gods from Babylonian uh, ancient religions as well excuse me have a bit of a cough and stuffed up a bit so this religion of solitude takes more faith than to look up at the night and see life. It takes more faith to look up and see the moon as a lifeless object than it, than it does. I mean, the sun is literally giving us life. Literally. Plants literally draw in energy from the sun. We are literally eating food created by the sun. We are literally eating energy, consuming consuming parts of the sun, consuming the energy of the sun. We are literally eating the sun. Mmm, -hmm, vitamin D. It's like coming out of the womb, turning around at your parents and saying, you don't exist cutting the umbilical cord and saying, I'm on my own. I believe in the religion of solitude. I have no family. <clears throat> it takes faith, great faith, and ignorance. But it seems that this family of entities from other planets and family of extraterrestrials who have made themselves known throughout various ways over our recorded history is allowing us to be in this state of um, state of not 100% definitive proof to the whole world you know what I mean no um aliens on the White House lawn, although we see videos of uh, UFO activity over, you know, the uh, White House and uh, Mexican government has admitted to uh, uh, aliens, really, and uh, of course the FBI, NSA has declassified alien files as I've talked about before. And, of course, you know, the Nazis were making flying saucers in the 40s, so imagine with unlimited uh, budgets what we've uh, been able to accomplish since then. If uh, we have gravity shielding, then uh, you're also shielding yourself from time, in a sense. 
So uh, time travel flying and flying saucers sort of go hand in hand. So the sky's the limit when you start getting into time travel. Are we the aliens? Are we the our ancestors coming back from the future? Are aliens us from the future coming back to warn, guide, correct, etc., etc., us? Thinking that we're alone is a religion, has become a religion, has become a secular religion, I don't know, scientific pseudoscience religion and it takes a lot of faith to believe it that's all I'm saying and uh, we are are not alone in the sense that <clears throat> we're on a planet of seven billion people that's pretty not alone <coughs> the ISS has people on it we're not alone we have human humans in space so we're not alone we're not alone you're not alone if you're in a human body uh, you're not alone. You have various organisms and other things that we could put under a microscope and, and prove it to you. You're not alone. The sun is literally giving us life. Literally. You're not alone. This religion of solitude and religion of loneliness takes more faith than it does to accept the reality that you're in a human body that has all these cells and various different things and atoms upon atoms tattooed on your leg and all over the place. You're not alone. So let's move on from the religion of loneliness and the religion of solitude and accept the fact that we are not alone. The universe is teeming with life. We are the universe. Uh, let's just say, until proven otherwise, that all planets have life on them. Why not? What's the worst that can happen in me thinking that? Nothing. It doesn't change anything. That's the funny thing. I'm eating. I have to go to work. I'm at work. I have to do things. I love my family. I have to do various things. I have my dreams and my goals and things that I've written down that I need to accomplish and do. What changes when you think that there's life on other planets? Does it make me crazy? Am I any crazier than I was 10 years ago? No? I don't know. I've always been sort of nutty, but... <clears throat> now, for me, it's an active thought because the brainwashing in our society is so heavy that you could have these thoughts all day, go to sleep and wake up, and you sort of forget them. So, as long as you've been educated, you're having to unbrainwash, re-educate, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. So, it's a lot to think about. And, uh, thank you for watching the blog. I think I got everything I wanted to say out Yeah, all right. Listening to Chevelle. See ya. Thanks for watching.